There's like a bazillion different cool features you could add to applications leveraging vectors and vector search. In case you didn't know, PlanetScale just released its open beta for vectors in MySQL, where you can actually store and build indexes for vector data right alongside your other relational columns in MySQL. In this video, what I wanna do is show you an example of how you can use this to add a feature to an application. I'm gonna walk you through how we can generate some embeddings for data, and then how we can leverage MySQL vector search to build a feature. So let's jump in. Okay, so a little bit ago, I worked on this application called HNRank, and what it is is a little web app that you can paste in a link from a post on Hacker News, and it gives you information about the overall ranking of this. What does it rank relative to other posts and how many posts is it tied with and these kind of things. So I'll show you a little example of this. I can go grab a link and then paste it in here. You can also just paste the ID. I'll hit go and then it gives me this information, right? So this can be really useful if you wanna know how your post or somebody's post is doing relative to all the other postings. But a feature that I could add to this, which would be cool, is to also then recommend posts that are similar to the one that the user is asking about. So what if in addition to this information down here, I gave the user some references to, hey, if you're looking up information about this post, you might be interested in these five other posts. You can go check them out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize vectors and embeddings and vectors in MySQL using PlanetScale to get this built. So I wanna show you how this works and we're gonna do it, of course, using PlanetScale and MySQL and also using a vector index, which is we're using the span algorithm uh, in our implementation of this and we'll see how it all comes together. The first thing we need to do is talk about how we're gonna set up our database. Over here, I have a couple of files, a load data script in Python, a schema file, and then also just a log file sitting there. So first, let me show you this schema file here. And this is the schema that we're gonna use for gathering and storing posts as well as the embeddings. So if you look, the, the really the actually only table that we're gonna use here is this post table. And we're gonna also use the Hacker News Algolia API to scrape information from Hacker News posts. And then we're gonna get what we want, generate an embedding and store that information in this table. But then for each one, we're also going to store an embedding. And this is the key right here for us being able to do vector similarity search. This is a vector of length 384. And if you watched that previous video where I talked about vectors and embeddings, you'll know that 384 is the length that the sentence transformers local library in Python uh, generates things at by default. So I'm gonna use that length and that's what we're gonna store into our database. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this on my database. And to do that, I'm just gonna cat out that SQL file and then pipe that into my CLI. And I have a pscale connect command running separately. So this will be able to communicate with it. Uh, it's asking me if I wanna do destructive actions because this is gonna drop tables if they already exist. One of the tables already exists right now and then proceed here. To confirm that they're created, I've got my console pulled up here just in the web browser on that database and I can say show tables, and it shows that both of those are there, and the one that I'm gonna be using is post, so I'll just say describe post. Uh, oh, describe post, there we go, okay. So we've got all those columns, and most importantly, we have that vector column in there. For population, I'm gonna use that other script that I had mentioned, the load data script. I've already gotten this written. It'd be a little tedious to do this live, but let me walk you through a little bit of what this is doing here. I've got importing a bunch of modules, and as I showed in that previous video, I'm also importing Sentence Transformer, and I'm loading in one of the models that I can run locally here on my computer. I've got some helper code here, this class for uh, building bulk insertions. Uh, a couple of basically helper functions, but kind of the meat is down here. I have this get URL function here, and this is for generating a URL that will do a search on the HN Algolia API, a function for making connections and in an environment, a .n file, I have some of this other information like host, username, password, database name. And then this right here is kind of the key function for doing the fetching of the data, scraping it from the API. Um, so I, create this insert builder, I make one of these requests, and then I 
add these rows into my insert builder. So after I make the request, I grab from the results uh, for each of the posts that it results, because it result, uh, returns multiple at a time, the object ID, the author, the title, etc. But then the key here for generating those vectors is this, right? So I take the text, which the text is just made up of what was the title of this Hacker News post, and then what text underneath the title, if any, did the user include when they submitted it. Using those two things, I submit that into the model to get a vector back, length 384, and that's gonna represent my embedding. That's my vector that stores meaning about this post. And so that's gonna be included when I go and do the insertion. I include uh, a call to two vector, and then I use join and map to convert this to a format that MySQL is going to be able to recognize and convert into a vector. So I'm gonna start that script. Python 3, load data, and we'll let this run for a few minutes and see what results we get. I let that script run for a few minutes. Let's see how many results it put into the database. We can go back, I'll just use our console over here and do a little select uh, count from the post table, and we've got 9,700. If you were really building this feature for production, you'd wanna scrape a much bigger data set than that, but this is a good data set size just for testing things out. Let's take a look at some of the actual data. So I'm gonna do a select title and from vector. So this is a function that will convert from just like the raw bytes format of the vector to something that's more human readable. So from vector embedding and then from post and we'll just limit it to like five rows because these are gonna be pretty big. Okay, so we can see that this is the human readable format of the vector. Uh, and so this just had like a one word title right there. Here's another one and so on and so forth, right? So if I'll show you what this looks like too, where if I didn't use that to or the from vector function, it would be a more compact representation, but just not as human readable, right? Because it's just a big hexadecimal number, basically. One more thing to do before we go build this feature is create the index on the column. Uh, to do this, I'm going to say create vector index. Uh, and this is going to be on, what is my table called again? Post, oh wait, create vector index. It's going to be called post vector index on post embedding. So basically the additional keyword here is this vector index because it's going to create a special type of index. And this will take a little bit to create here. So we'll have to wait for this to finish. It's not a whole ton of rows, but if you think about the these vectors, right, they're very large data types, so it does take a little bit longer to create. So now I've got this, and I'll say show uh, indexes from post, and I've got the primary key index, I've got this other one that I had created in that schema.sql file, and then here is the vector one that I have created. So now I'm in my server Flask directory, and this is what my server looks like Currently, it's a pretty simple Flask server. I already have some stuff set up in here, such as I already have the sentence transformer model. I already have a function for connecting to the database and things like that. But as it's written right now, basically all that it's doing is it's serving files as sort of a static website from that client directory. So what I wanna do is add a function in here to make this request to the database do a similarity search and return those results. So I'm gonna write a couple of things here. I'm gonna create a new route. So I'm gonna say app.route, and then I can pick whatever route I want to be the endpoint here. So I'm gonna make an API and then say similar. So this endpoint is gonna give me back things that are similar. And then I'm also gonna say the methods. Yeah, the methods equals, this is just gonna be a simple get request. Okay, so then the function's name is gonna be just similar. And then here is where we're going to do interesting stuff. Let me add some lines down here at the bottom. Okay, so what I need to do is I want to get the parameter. I'm gonna have the user submit a get parameter. So this is going to be, I guess, the title of whatever post a user searched for in the client. So this is gonna be app dot uh, args dot get we're going to get the title from this and then i want to generate the embedding and we're going to use the same technique that we did uh, in that load script as well so the embedding equals what did i call that model dot encode 
and this is going to just encode that title. So this will create that 384 length list of a bunch of floating point numbers. Okay, so next up, connect to the database. And here I'm gonna do it kind of dumb where I just make a new connection to the database each time. This is just a little simple test app. So I'm gonna call that connect DB function. And this is gonna return a connection. And then I'm gonna get a cursor from that. So the cursor equals connection dot cursor, cursor. And I think now we're ready to actually execute a query. So first let's kind of get some of the boilerplate out of the way. Cursor dot execute. And I'll say select the title and the URL. Those will be the two things I'll send back from the post table. And I'm going to order by, and this is actually where I'm going to basically have the vector similarity search happen because I'm gonna say we're gonna order it by similarity and then limit to let's say five most similar results. So I'll use the distance function and this in here, I'm gonna give it the vector that I just generated. So I need to say two, oops, two vector. And then this is where I'm going to put that one that I created. So let me actually put brackets. And again, this is, this is me doing this, building it as a string. You also can stream bytes directly into this if you wanna improve efficiency a little bit, but I'm just gonna kinda do it the sort of easier way. And I'll do a comma, dot join, and what did I call this? It's just called embedding. Embedding, do I need anything else there? Um, oh yes, map these to a string so that rather than floats they're treated as strings so I need to tell it that it's the embedding column so this embedding right here is telling it to do it on the embedding column whereas this embedding here is using my local variable embedding and then we're gonna do uh, L2 squared for our similarity metric uh, you can choose different similarity metrics. There's cosine similarity, L2 squared, and all this. So we're going to stick with L2 squared. And then finally, uh, we don't want all of the results ranked. So I'm just going to limit this to five total results. That will be right here. Okay. So we select title, URL, from post, order by distance, convert my embedding to a vector. We're doing a little string manipulation here. Uh, we tell what we want it to happen on the embedding column, L2 squared, limit five. Okay. We've got that. So now I'm gonna execute, or actually that already executed. What I wanna do is fetch the results. So results equals cursor dot fetch all. And then I think I can just return these connection, or no, yeah, we'll return. So I'll close the cursor and then I'll return. Let's return a dictionary where I just specify, hey, the results are here and send that back to the client. I went in and fixed a couple of typos that I made apparently while I was writing this code. Why didn't you guys tell me that I was making typos? Oh well, anyway, fixed a couple things. There was an issue with the way this quote was, a couple of variables and things spelled wrong. So I went and fixed those. Now we can go back over to here and we can test out our API. So I'm gonna replace the URL up here with uh, slash API slash similar and like I had before, right? A large frog will be our test. So this is gonna execute, gives me back some results. And as you can see, for one, it looks like we have some duplicate data in our database, which again is okay for the purposes of testing, but especially given that we only have a small set of a little under 10,000 pieces of information, pretty good, right? It said something, this has like the title frog in it. This says a frogger demake. So some stuff that is loosely similar. I'm sure if we had scraped a lot more data, if we had a million rows in our database with a bunch more Hacker News posts, it could probably get some even more relevant stuff. Now I'm back over in code.js and I need to get this integrated into my front end. I'm gonna go copy over a function because really it's just one function that I need to add here and it has a decent amount of just boilerplate stuff in it. So I'll walk through what exactly this is doing here. But this is my get rex function for getting recommendations. And what I wanna do is pass into it a title. So somewhere in here along the way, as I'm fetching the result to put on the page, I'll also call this function, give it the title. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna build this URL and make a fetch request to my server. 
So the base URL, rex, that's a variable over up at the top. So that's this one right here where it's set up to work with localhost right now. So just 127.0.0.1, uh, port 8000, API similar. So that's my endpoint that I set up over on the server there. And then at the end of that, it puts it URI encodes that title that I get passed in. So we make that request, we process the result as a JSON, and now we have that JSON object, which remember, it was really just a dictionary that said response, and then I mapped the results to it, and that results is a two-dimensional array with all of the results in it. So what I'm doing here really is, could do this a lot of other fancier ways as well, I'm just doing some kind of very basic slapping together an HTML string and putting it into my page. So I'm making a title, recommended post, and then I'm gonna go through each one of those recommendations that the server returns to me and build a div where I use the link, that's the second uh, entry in each one of those results, and the first is the title. So I'm just building a div that has a link to the recommended post and use the title for the name. And then over here, this is where I actually insert it onto my page. I get my element that has ID recommendations, put that as the inner HTML in there, Let's go back just to remind you about that's over here. So I'm putting it inside of this div so it'll show up below the results, but above like the footer at the bottom of the page. So I'll go in and I should actually already have, yeah, I'm just gonna uncomment this out here, but this is my function for starting the process of actually doing the initial search and showing rankings. So down here, after I put all of that other stuff on the page, I can just do something like, call my get rex function, pass in the title, and it's gonna send that title to the server, generate an embedding for it, and then find posts that have similar meaning based on that similarity search. One other thing I realized we need to change down here is it's not data.recommendations. The way that I did this is I said it was results. That's where I mapped the results into. So data.results. And then recommendations though is still the ID that I have for the actual HTML. So I'm back on the HNRank homepage. Let's try out that same B-trees and database indexes one from before. So I'll paste that URL in, hit go, and we see the ranking, but then down below, we see that it populated it with some recommended posts. And of course the top rated one is my same one. So maybe we could have done something smarter where, hey, if it's the same exact post, exclude that result. But then after we actually have some related information. And again, you gotta consider we're dealing with a subset of all actual HN posts, just a little under 10,000 at the moment. Let's also just for fun, let's go pick whatever is the top on this right now. So we've got this post here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, paste this one in and hit go. So it gets me the ranking information and then it gives me a couple of other uh, recommended posts for that as well. All right, so there we go. That is an example of how we can add a vector column to our database, build an index for it, do searches on it, and use it to build useful product features in our applications. If you're interested in learning more about vectors in MySQL, you should definitely go check out our docs. We have a very nice suite of documentation that talks about how you can use MySQL vectors and even some general vectors terminology and covering different kinds of index algorithms that are out there. So I highly recommend you go check that out and start building cool stuff with vectors in MySQL. Thanks for watching this video. Take care and I'll talk to you in the next one. <laughs>